and welcome to Florida Hospitals Health Chat. I'm Jennifer Roberts. Today's chat is a two for one special. We're talking about two different topics, carpal tunnel syndrome and total, total shoulder replacement. We've got a great expert here to talk about both of those issues. Dr. Brian LeYoung is our expert. He's an orthopedic surgery specialist. He's gonna debunk some myths about carpal tunnel syndrome for us and give patients some good questions to ask when facing a shoulder replacement surgery. The doctor is in, so let's get started. Dr. LeYoung, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you. Um, so tell me, we're gonna start with carpal tunnel syndrome. You say there's some myths around that. So let me run through some of those and you can kind of debunk them as we go through. Um, the first one you have is most pain in the hand is caused by carpal tunnel syndrome. Why is yes. that not accurate? Well, you, you'll hear several times that, you know, a patient walks into the doc doctor's office and says that they start to have pain in the hand, and it's often said, oh, that must be carpal tunnel syndrome. Mm -hmm. um, when an, Actually, carpal tunnel is a very specific diagnosis. It's very common in the hand, um, but it refers to pain that's caused by pressure in the palm of your hand. Um, that also leads to pain at night when you sleep, numbness and tingling to your thumb, second, and your third finger. Mm -hmm. um, there are many other possible causes of pain in the hand, anything from arthritis to tendonitis within the fingers. Um, but carpal tunnel is very common, um, but it's a very specific condition. Um, some people think carpal tunnel syndrome only happens to people who sit in an office and work on the computer, or they're heavy laborers, they work with their hands a lot. Yes, that is a risk factor. People that do a lot of repetitive activities put a lot of pressure right at that area in the palm. Um, but actually, you know, many people have carpal tunnel syndrome. They've never worked in an office or they've never, you know, performed heavy labor, um, such as working in a factory or something. Mm -hmm. um, it's just a very common condition. Yeah. Um, recovery from carpal tunnel, tunnel surgery takes a long time. You know, with our, with our newer endoscopic techniques, um, we're able to perform the operation through much smaller incisions and then put a camera inside of the hand and actually relieve all the pressure within the carpal tunnel. Um, whereas previously, we'd have to make a much bigger incision over the palm of the hand. And, and by doing so, the recovery is actually not bad at all. Uh, right after the surgery, I let the patient move the hand as much as they feel comfortable afterwards. There will be some general soreness from the surgery, um, but I always encourage the patient to try to make a full fist, move their hand as much as they feel comfortable. Um, with the goal of trying to get back to full activities, maybe even back to work full duty by about four weeks to six weeks. Wow. Is this an inpatient surgery or is this done on an outpatient basis? It's an outpatient surgery, so the, the patient comes in and then is able to go home the same day. Wow. Wow. Um, <laughs> some people think that carpal tunnel surgery just doesn't work. I, I hear that a lot um, when, when patients come into my office, but actually it's a very successful surgery um, where over 95% of the patients come in with complete relief of the carpal tunnel. Um, and that means no more pain, no more problems when they sleep at night, um, no more that numbness or tingling, having to shake their hand to, to get the feeling back within their hand. Um, I think the people that don't quite get complete relief either may have another medical condition in, di in addition to carpal tunnel, for example, diabetes mm -hmm. or thyroid disease may make you more predisposed to have continued numbness in the hand um, if it causes any neuropathy um, from the diabetes. Um, there may be other conditions of, such as cervical disease, so pain in the neck or pressure on one of the nerves in the neck. Um, or possibility that the carpal tunnel wasn't released completely through, through the operation, or th the patient didn't have, you know, carpal tunnel to begin with. Mm -hmm. So that's where it's important to really meet with the orthopedist um, that, that's trained specifically for carpal tunnel uh, surgery and carpal tunnel symptoms, is able to rule out any other conditions, and, you know, can really, you know, determine if what you need is an operation for carpal tunnel. Mm -hmm. Some people think carpal tunnel syndrome often comes back after the surgery. Is that possible or common? Very, very unlikely. Mm -hmm. uh, again, you know, the, the success rate for this operation is well over 95 to 99 percent, um, and, and it very rarely comes back. Things that make, you know, make me look out for if it comes back or not is if they have that other condition, maybe diabetes or you know, anything else that you know, may lead to, you know, extra pressure in the nerve, um, or if they start to have numbness and tingling, is there any other condition? Is there a problem in the neck also? Before we move on to talk about um, shoulder replacement, talk a little bit about, are there things that people can do 
before you go down the surgery route with carpal tunnel? Um, how do you know that, okay, I need to start thinking about surgery? Are there things I can do before that point? Sure. Um, you know, I'll, everything we try to do before, you know, we try to treat everything from the least invasive to the most invasive, most invasive being surgery. Um, so if someone comes into my office and has had carpal tunnel for maybe a few months, we can try wearing a brace of the hand. By wearing a brace, it keeps the wrist and the hand straight, and it takes away a lot of the pressure from the carpal tunnel. The problems that they have are mostly when they sleep, then they wear the brace when they sleep at night. If it's at work, then they wear it at work. Um, sometimes by taking away that pressure, keeping the hand straight, it will decrease the inflammation and the swelling away from the nerve. Um, you can try medications such as Aleve, ibuprofen, any anti-inflammatory of your choice, mm -hmm. which can sometimes help with the pain and the, and the, and the, and the feeling. Um, injections are possibilities sometimes. And if you've tried all of those things and they ha they've, you still have the pain and you still have numbness and tingling in your hand, then you may be a good candidate for the carpal tunnel surgery. Is there anything in particular, you know, you talk about a, a risk factor with office workers and people that maybe work in factories doing that repetitive motion. Are there ways that people that know that they have those kind of jobs, what can they do to maybe even prevent this? I often recommend having someone evaluate the workspace and really look for what we call ergonomic centered um, equipment. So typewriters that aren't, you know, that don't have the wrists so extended or you know, that kind of position can tend to put a lot of pressure on the carpal tunnel. Um, whereas a little modification and having maybe a higher chair um, or a, a keyboard that's a little bit straighter may, may do all, you know, do everything it needs to do to take the pressure within the carpal tunnel. All right, Dr. Lugin, let's move on to our second topic, which is total shoulder replacement. We hear a lot about hip and knee replacement. Um, wh why would someone need a shoulder replacement? For similar reasons, so the reason you do a hip and knee replacement usually is for arthritis, and what that means is the cartilage starts to wear off of the bones, and eventually the bone will rub onto the bone um, and cause a lot of pain. And in the shoulder, it's the same exact thing. You lose all the cartilage that protects the bone, and, and you start to get bone spurs, things start to pinch, you, your range of motion, the movement in your shoulder becomes very limited. Um, and, and you can no longer, you know, you really don't have a good quality of life, you know, that you wake up because of the pain. Moving the shoulder is painful. Um, things like washing your hair, putting clothes on um, becomes very limited. Um, and so for me, someone that has bad arthritis, has tried everything, um, c you know, non-surgical and has continued pain, um, is not happy with the way their life is going or the quality of life is going, that person may be a good candidate for a shoulder replacement surgery. Um, who are the patients that you see most often? Are we talking about people that are involved in sports or, you know, is there a certain mm -hmm. typical patient that would need a shoulder replacement? There's a wide variety of people that come in, anywhere from people that are very active, like to play tennis, sail, um, to anyone that does, you know, that really isn't that athletic and, and just is trying to get by, you know, through their daily activities. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so I, I, there's a large range of t people that I see. Yeah. So you had provided us with a couple of questions that you think patients should ask their physician before they go in and have that shoulder replaced. And so we're going to get your answers to those questions. So the first one is, what about, what are the outcomes? So what can patients expect after um, shoulder replacement surgery? And what are the complications that can occur? Sure. So that, you know, there, there's no bad question when, when it comes before you talk about an op, uh, such a big operation like a shoulder replacement surgery. Um, and what we do with the, sh the a shoulder replacement is we would take away the bone and the cartilage that's on it and replace it with a metal ball and a, pl a plastic socket. Um, and through that, it, that serves as your new shoulder joint and, and you're able to become more active again. And the outcomes of it are actually very, very good. By, you know, by about one year after your operation, almost 95% of the people are doing very well. They're back to normal activities. Their pain is gone. Um, and, and even, you know, if they enjoy tennis or, or more athletic um, types of activities, they're able to go back to those as well. Mm -hmm. um, your other question is, what are the alternatives to surgery? Alternatives to surgery, um, the, again, we try to treat everything from least invasive to most invasive. So anything from trying physical therapy to try to get the movement back in the shoulder, trying to control the pain uh, through medications or anti-inflammatories 
Tylenol, ibuprofen uh, may be a possibility. Injections may, may be beneficial in the shoulder, at least to, you know, get you more comfortable. Those don't cure the arthritis, but at least it gets you back to, you know, back to a normal um, sense of well-being. Um, in terms of surgery, shoulder replacement is definitely a good option. There's also arthroscopic surgery for arthritis, where sometimes you can remove loose pieces of cartilage. You can look at the muscle and maybe repair any of the muscles that may be damaged at the same time. Um, that sometimes can be a, a good alternative to shoulder replacement surgery as well. You know, shoulder replacement surgery is not without its risks and complications. Um, they're very, very rare. Um, but, you, you know, there there's still very real risks in terms of infections, um, bleeding. Um, anytime you put foreign metal or plastic inside of the body, there's a risk that that may fail. Um, so, th you know, those risks, again, are very rare. But, you know, I, I think for those reasons, it's better to try to treat it as conservatively as possible. And then if you've tried all of that and the pain continues and you're just not happy, then shoulder replacement is a very good option for you. Yeah. Um, how much can patients expect after surgery? And how will the, the shoulder, what is the treatment at the hospital and then after at home? Everyone deals with pain very differently. Um, but, you know, w thankfully today we've, we've discovered and we try to do a lot of things to keep the at least the, the period around the surgery as comfortable as possible. Um, so one of the new things that we do are, is regional anesthesia, and, and, and it's what we call nerve blocks. Um, and, and that's performed by identifying the nerves within the neck and the shoulder with an ultrasound machine. And you can actually put an anesthetic around those nerves so that you really have very little pain during the surgery. And, and now what we're able to do is we're actually able to put a catheter inside of the, around the nerves that give you the anesthetic for almost a week um, after the surgery. So the first week, you know, you're, you're relatively pain free, mm -hmm. which gives you the, you know, the advantage of being actually able to go home almost immediately after surgery mm -hmm. um, because your pain is so well controlled. Um, while you go home, we do give you some pain medication if you need it. Um, but a lot of times now, you know, the, with the nerve blocks, um, you don't have to take as many much pain medication. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sounds great. And another question that you recommend that patients ask their doctor before shoulder surgery. What rehabilitation am I going to need after the surgery? And what am I going to expect as far as the activities that I'm going to be able to do when I, you know, get all healed? You know, so the, after the surgery, there is, you will need to have some physical therapy afterwards. Um, you wear a sling that protects the shoulder for about six weeks. And during that time, you're able to come out of the sling and work one-on-one -on -one with a physical therapist to try to get the mobility back in the arm. And once the muscles have had a time to heal, which is about six weeks again, um, you start to do a little bit more. You start to lift the arm up in the air, really get the arm moving, and, and start to strengthen the arm um, through weight training um, and other types of activities. And the goal is by about three or four months to be back to you know, most of your normal activities that are performed around the house, taking a shower, dressing yourself, um, and then between four to six months, going back to anything else that you may want to do, sporting activities. Um, the, and then the goal is by the end of the year, you're probably fully recovered from the surgery. The st strength of the muscles have returned back to normal. And you're back to all, all your normal activities. So it sounds like it's very progressive. So you, you get those daily activities back first and then more activity and then maybe a year out, as you're saying. Exactly. We're kind of wrapping it up and you're... As good as new, exactly. close to good as new. Exactly. <laughs> Dr. Leung, thanks so much for your time and your expertise on carpal tunnel syndrome as well as on this uh, shoulder replacement surgery. That's all the time we have today for Florida Hospitals Health Chat. Of course, Dr. Leung gave us some great advice on those two topics, carpal tunnel syndrome and total shoulder replacement. Now, if you think any of these um, issues may be something that you're dealing with, we invite you to make an appointment to see Dr. Leung. You can do so very easily. There's a phone number here for you. It's 407-599-6111. Again, 407-599-6111. Or you can visit them online at orthopedicsofflorida.com. Thanks so much for watching. I'm Jennifer Roberts.